What's going on, everybody? Bati 1922, and today we are going to be taking a look at the Godzilla NES creepypasta. Now, this is going to be narrated by a YouTuber. Uh, his name's Billy Styler. Uh, I'll put his name in the description. Make sure you go check out his channel. He does like very good content with like very creepy pasta stuff. And this one stood out to me the most since um, I like Godzilla a lot. Even though, unlike my intro, I don't show him. I, but I am a huge fan. Like, I got some collectibles of Godzilla stuff right over there on my dresser. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't bother me one bit that I have those. So, this is Godzilla NES, the most disturbing creepypasta of all time. Now, this creepypasta came out two years ago. That was 2020. The worst year in Earth, of course, because of uh, the whole entire, you know, thing going on back there. Don't want to talk about it, though, because I um, might get demonetized. I don't even know. But, uh, yeah, so... Credit to Billy Styler for narrating this. Uh, we are taking a look at this. Make sure you go check out Billy Styler. And for that, let's go. See you, Dad. Today, I am going to tell you a tale. But not just any tale. An internet horror story that at its core is one of the most disturbing video game creepypasta. Okay, so for your instance, this first kaiju, that's Mothra. I don't know who that is, but that's not part of the Godzilla franchise. I don't even know who this character is. There will be a lot to take in during this video, as the narrative is quite long. First, I will be establishing a lengthy synopsis of the creepypasta as a whole, while simultaneously analyzing and dissecting key moments, characters, and symbolism. After that, I will discuss the story in retrospective fashion by exploring its impact on modern-day creepypastas, then end it all off by interpreting where the future of this story will go next. So sit back, relax, maybe grab yourself a snack, and prepare yourself for the infamous story behind the one and only. The story behind Godzilla Monster of Monsters Creepypasta, aka Godzilla NES. And information, um, I forgot to like post this community post saying whichever uh, voting of creepypasta I should watch gets the least votes wins. And I forgot to add that in the community post before I deleted it. So, well actually right after I deleted it. And uh, yeah, so Godzilla NES wins. Uh, Mandela Catalog, I don't know when we'll be doing it, but I think next year. Yeah, I'm probably sure by, about that. Anyways, let's continue. The 1980s is one of the most influential decades in video game history. If you were around during this time, you would have witnessed the rise and fall of all things gaming. Up until 1983, various consoles and titles were being pushed out left and right, many of these titles being extremely similar to others. It was at this point when the infamous video game crash of 1983, also known as the Atari crash in Japan, Atari a title crash that saturated the worldwide video game market. Fortunately, this crash only lasted a few years, and it gave the opportunity for the soon-to-be influential video game corporation, Nintendo, to step in. In October 1985, the Nintendo Entertainment System was released in North America, with iconic launch titles such as Duck Hunt, Wrecking Crew, 
and Super Mario Bros., the system exceeded all expectations as family households rushed to purchase this device, thus reviving the once deceased video game market. This in turn paved the way for other corporations to succeed, such as Sega with Sonic the Hedgehog and Sony with the debut of the PlayStation. Huh. But with the NES came many interesting games, one of which was released a mere few years after the launch of the console. Godzilla Monster of Monsters, released in December 1988, is a... Uh, by the way, everyone, this creepypasta did come out, um, right after two decades ago. This game was released back then. Two decades later, there was a, there's now a creepypasta of this. I've, I've heard something about it. I've seen, like, Friday Night Funkin' mods of it. It looks good. So, yeah, the Godzilla NES stood out to me the most. This is, like, the very first creepypasta of Godzilla I've ever heard, and I think this is the only one I've ever seen. It's a game where you play or as will Godzilla ever see. and Mothra fighting giant monsters on each planet. That monster right there that, you, that you're seeing that the person is fighting with Mothra, that's Gizora. ...across the solar system, aiming to reach planet X. Where King Ghidorah awaits a final. That's King Ghidorah. King Ghidorah is like one of the most one of uh, Godzilla's most um, toughest enemies and one of my favorite monsters in the movie franchise. I love this thing. Battle. The gameplay is what you would expect for a late 1980s title. You start on Earth, which is represented by a hexagonal map, where you can move either Godzilla or Mothra in a chess-like pattern. Each of these hexagons contains a playable side-scrolling level where enemies attack and shoot at you. The goal is to advance both Godzilla and Mothra to the next planet by finishing the base headquarters level on the opposite end of each map. In addition to this, there are between two to eight monster boss battles on each planet that attempt to block you as you progress. These giant monsters, also known as kaiju, move on the map like you do, and if you happen to move beside one, or have one move right next to you, a battle will begin. During these battles, that one's you have roughly 40 seconds to defeat the kaiju, and if done successfully, they will disappear from the map and you may continue on. The entire game consists of eight worlds, these being Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Pluto, Neptune, and Planet X. On these planets, you will encounter a total of eight monsters. Gizora, Mogira, that's Varen, Baragon, seven of which, Hidora, are often found repeat Gigan, across multiple and Mecha Godzilla. Worlds. And these King Ghidorah. Are Gizora, Magura, Varan, Okay, I don't blame the pronunciation for this guy, but for me, but to like a lot of people, it's pronounced Mogira. Aragon, Hedora, Gigan, and Mecha Godzilla. The last one, King Ghidorah, and Varen, is a super strong creature that may only be found during the end game on Planet X. But you're probably wondering. How such a simple NES game like this could have anything remotely terrifying attached to it? Well, there's something dark that came from this title a mere two decades after its release. Really? That spawned a revolution of video game horror stories alike. Did you just hate it when you have ads watching YouTube videos? NES Godzilla Creepypasta is regarded as one of the most disturbing. By the way, there is a sequel to this. I will do a reaction on that tomorrow, video game though. Creepypastas of all time. Originally submitted to the horror site Bogleach by user Bog Cosby Leech. Daff in 2011, it has become Cosby Daff most notable for containing various amounts of screenshots that add to the realism of the story. The creepypasta 
is told from the perspective of a man named Zachary, who recounts the night he received a Godzilla, monster of monsters, from his childhood friend Billy. The reason Zachary received this game is because of his obsession with it as a child. He states how he was gifted it for his birthday back in the day, but later traded it in for another game, something he regretted for many years. After booting up the cartridge and being flooded with nostalgia, everything began as normal. The title sequence, first world, and levels were all like he remembered, up until that first fight with Gazora, that is. You see, partially through battle, the game glitched out, and Zack had a hard time getting any attacks in. Like I said earlier, battles only last for a maximum of 40 seconds at a time, before you have to restart and try again. But Zack explains, this fight lasted for 5 minutes, before the entire screen began glitching, and became unplayable. Whoa! That is actually creepy. What the? That is... Whoa. As most NES players would, he pulled the cartridge out from the console, blew in it, and reset the game. Afterwards, everything seemed back to normal. Zachary finished playing Earth with nothing out of the ordinary, and proceeded to the next level, Mars. Mars. But this is where problems began arising again. After defeating Gazora for a second time, the screen began glitching out again, this time with Gazora's eye spawning all over the what screen the... in a dark, red color. At this point in the narrative, Zack proclaims his regret on ignoring these glitches, foreshadowing something more sinister later on in the story. But of course, as most creepypastas go, he continues- Look at that thing, that is actually terrifying. All of Gizora's eyes are just spawning everywhere, and there's just this, like, what? Is that an eye? I, I'm probably sure. On anyway. In the next boss battle, he encounters Mogura. Mogira. This time, twice the size he is normally. After a swift fight, instead of sinking to the bottom of the screen after death, as per usual, Mogura's sprite shattered Whoa. and began melting, which of course never actually happens in the real game. Then, strange enough, Zack found the next monster. <sighs> to be Titanosaurus. Titanosaurus. That that monster was not added. You did not see that Titanosaurus was added into the original video game. Because he wasn't. He's not supposed to be in Godzilla NES. Never before seen in the original game. Nothing strange happened during this battle, which led Zack to believe he must have an early copy of the game. Which was really copy glitches, never before seen effects, and new monsters. After fighting his way to victory and proceeding through Earth's headquarters level, he expected to be greeted by the word Jupiter, but instead was confronted with a new planet. Pathos. Pathos? If you thought things were wrong before. Then this is the moment when everything in the game broke, broke down. down. What do you mean? Upon initial glance of the world map, Zack noticed Wait. many. Okay, another monster that never got added in the game. This right here, that's Biolante. Biolante is a female kaiju that the movie Godzilla vs. Biolante was released during 1989. This video game, Godzilla NES, Monster of Monsters, came out in 1988. That was right... Like, that game came out before Biolante did. 
Biollante was in 1989. This, the original Godzilla Monster of Monsters video game for the NES was uh, made in 1988. Biollante never existed in 1988. She existed in 1989. Many irregularities from the game he remembered. Instead of green, the color of the map was blue. The level icons changed from their usual shape to strange rock-like structures. Whoa. The music was also more ominous, giving Zack an unsettling feeling. And in addition to these changes, he noticed a new character on the board, Biolante, who wasn't even created until 1989. Like I said, wasn't created till 1989. Just said it. A year after the creation of Godzilla. Because I watched the Godzilla movies. Yes. Zack kept If you didn't know, uh, back then when I was like a little like this high right here probably sure this high like hold on hold on let me actually get a good scale of me right now so this is me right here this right here this little me right here i i used to be scared of godzilla back then when i was that little that i just showed you probably sure you've seen it if you haven't then uh i don't know but yeah, I was like terrified of Godzilla when I was like that little. But then I actually liked it when I first uh, got introduced. I was like terrified that it was like scary. Convincing himself this was still an unreleased version of the game, possibly even created to hype up the upcoming 19. me everyone or do I see oh, that's a face you see that face it's just my dog my dog opened my door here come here come here come here it's my puppy let's watch this together puppies Leia Watch this together. Void of all enemies. Yeah, there's a face enemies. right here. Look at that. In contrast to the unsettling red moon above the player's head. But it wasn't until the boss battles where things took a wild turn. Although their kaiju on the board looked as they normally do, the monsters during battle were... Hold on. Uh... <laughs> Sorry, I was just laughing too much that I uh, just coughed. I'm not sick or anything. I just had a cough. Just, I had my blanket because here's the thing. My dog always loves laying on blankets. That's the thing. Ain't that right? Yeah, she likes it. There we go. Now, you just sit back and watch again. In every way possible. What happened to Yazora? Hold on. <laughs> that is not Yazora. Like most things shown so far, were never. That's not Mogira. 
exist within the entire Godzilla universe. And I know I keep saying this over and over, but bear with me for a moment here. Although these moments that experience could be described as eerie, unnatural, and or disturbing, they aren't even the most unforgiving part of this narrative, as it's at the end of Pathos where the most pivotal moment of the game steps in. The moment that changes everything about this story. I know who that character is. I know who that character is and like the red face, that's red. I've seen his image before. It was like back in 2021, I like thought it was like some kind of a image or something, like a fake image that was made by someone. But I think this did originate from uh, the Godzilla NES creepypasta. Zachary is still playing this game. Leia just heard something from downstairs. It's okay. She's a cute dog. I showed her in a couple of videos, but I'm probably sure this is gonna be one of the best ones. Let's turn on the volume. This is creepy. Leia, come on. What? That, that's red, isn't it? Okay, yeah, that is terrifying. Dude. What? Dude, he has creepy crab slash spider legs. I don't like that, man. Leia. <laughs> it's every time when I like try to watch something, Leia always goes like this. Uh, hold on. One of my friends just texted me, just, uh, hold up before we continue this. A rudely interrupted, god dang it. I keep getting my passcode in Ah, that's fine. Alright. That's actually scary, bro. Like, he has no teeth, and he has no pupils. This gay, this character has to be like one of the most creepiest creepypasta characters I have ever witnessed in my life. <coughs> Wait, what just? Bro, you just like what? Chase level. My name, my actual name. Chase. It's at this point in the story where Zack's mood pulls a full 180 and shifts into panic, shock, and confusion. It's also. Also, I really hoped you guys liked the uh, murder drones reaction I did two days ago since it, was, since it was my birthday two days ago. Really glad I did a reaction on it. My, Trini my girlfriend Trinity just. She wanted me to react to it, and I did. So, there's that. So the moment where we meet Red, the demonic-looking spider creature... So yeah, his name is Red. ...specific type of fear into the protagonist and the reader. However, Zachary's thoughts quickly fade... You guys can, like, almost see her paw, like, game. just waving around. Just Okay, so right there on top here, there's Hedora, Varen, and that is another uh, Godzilla character that never got added into the game since it was made in 1988.
That is a 1999 character known as Orga from the Godzilla movie Godzilla 2000. Dude, his mouth Before opens up. The three significant plot points from this moment on. Those being the red chases, the upcoming quiz levels, and Zack's painful history. In the next five worlds, named Trance, Dementia, Entropy, Extus, and Zenith, which take the place of the planets Jupiter, Planet X, Zat comes across a strange mechanic that unintentionally adds strange mechanic cherry on top to the story. Meet Face, who is just face. Mad, an unequivocal face who resides within the quiz levels. In these levels, marked with a question. His name's Face, map, just that, it's that just Face. It, it's almost like. <laughs> Is literally the name of this one character that's from Oblitas Casa, which is the face, the creepypasta Five Nights at Freddy's fan game based on the Disney characters, Mickey Mouse, Donald, Daisy, Minnie Mouse, Goofy, Pete, all those characters. Leia, can you please, for the love of God, just be quiet for once in your life. Hold up. All right, I think she wants to uh, lay down on my bed, so I'm just gonna do that. Um, hold on. We already watched like 16 minutes of this. This is gonna be a while. There you go. Anyone out? Go on. All right, we're good. I'm like so done with like mind readers. That says, do you like dogs? I'm about to say yes. But if anything happens to my dog, I'm just going to cry. I'm just, I'm a dog person. Wait, 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 what kind of monsters were those up top? That one I think, yeah, that's Gigan. That's Manda. Manda never got added into the game. That's strange. Manda was first released in the Godzilla franchise in the 2004 film Godzilla Final Wars. And he was in the movie at the very beginning. And this one, that's Baragon. Yeah, it's Baragon. Zack sometimes even received new characters to play as Would you like a new monster? What's that? The oh, so in this like creepypasta game, you get like a new monster. So whoever he gets, if he says yes, he gets a new monster. So this one, this is Anguirus. Anguirus is like one of mo one of uh, Godzilla's um friends if you have to say that and they're all not the same species but they work together in a couple movies that is, 
which I will come back to later. Next comes red. Unfortunately, its chase levels are also recurring. Yeah, so you play as like the three monsters that you have in here, or not you, but Zack. So in this, this is a water level, so red has like the power to shapeshift or something? To like turn into monstrous forms? So this is like, like, what? Water? And apparently you play as, well, Zack played as Anguirus to swim, even though Anguirus, he can swim, but in this game, he's just curled up in the ball while swimming away from red. But with a twist in each iteration. And now he also has the ability to fly, where you play as Mothra. At the end of Trance, the same planet... Yep, Hedora, Varen, Orga. Where Zack met face for the first time. Red's level begins with platforming obstacles. And there's the land version of Red. And eats as it chases Zack. It differs slightly from the first encounter. Nonetheless, still follows the same mechanics. But the true terror comes when Zack erupts. What? Not far from you, son. Okay. Runs red and beats the chase level. In ecstatic gamer fashion, Zachary proudly roars. Not this time, asshole. Ooh. However, Burn. the second after that final word slips off his tongue, Red's head turns, faces the screen, with this deadly stare. What do you mean? That almost scared me. That almost scared me with the end popping. But wow, that in that is actually terrifying. My goodness, that is actually terrifying. After this unexpected timing, Zack's blood runs cold, and panic takes control of his body. But once again, he quickly calms down. Most of his fears subside. It's this moment that adds to the overall realism of the narrative. That's... Hold the phone. That one right there on the very top right here. Like, look, 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 look. Look. That's Space Godzilla. He... I don't... No. No, 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 no. Yeah, Godzilla... Like, Space Godzilla never got introduced in the Godzilla franchise yet. Biolante was like like the very first to be introduced in like the 1980s. But that's Space Godzilla. Space Godzilla I think came out yeah, 1992 along with uh, another monster introduced there which was uh, Mogira. But yeah, that's Space Godzilla. So four monsters right here, Space Godzilla, Gigan, Manda and Baragon. You see many creepy pastas at the time. Oh my god. Now we're gonna just get two other creepy pastas, I think. The first one is Red Miss Squidward. Of course you know Miss from Crimson Morning. R.I.P. Bide on hyper realistic graphics and the narrator being oblivious to the fact that such things Sonic AC, favorite happen. creepypasta. Gonna get restored. Zack ultimately dismisses Red Stare as just a coincidence and holds on to the idea that he's playing a hacked cartridge. A hacked a cartridge? From what most creepypasta writers did at the time. And in my opinion, it's more realistic and therefore a lot scarier. Although we know that something very wrong will end up happening to Zack later on. Due to the nature of this story, we still have a moment of empathy for him during this scene, as it's also how our mind would work if we were ever put in this scenario. However, that all gets thrown out the window when Zack finally arrives on Entropy, the sixth world in this story. Wow. 
After navigating through a series of harrowing levels, Zack finds himself in a more tranquil, yet unnerving one. Completely void of monsters, with nothing but a large pale moon and an empty grass plain. There is no f there Red's face is not even on the moon anymore. Zack feels something familiar about this place. After a bit of navigating, he comes across a body of water. At this moment... Uh... I don't... If you, like, turn your head like me right here, it kind of looks like a creepy face. You can kind of see that there's, like, two eyes a little bit. The moon breaks open, and a curled-up humanoid figure what? falls into the water. And seconds later, a monster dubbed as the Moon Beast What? Appears. But this is when the game truly shows its metaphysical side and shatters that boundary between reality and fantasy as this appears on Zack's TV. I'm not ready for this, though. Melissa. Kill yourself. Holy. And leads us into the third segment from the latter half of this creepypasta. Zachary Zachary's painful death. Pain not death. <laughs> <coughs> oh God, Zach's painful history. His painful history. To save time and my own effort on trying to explain this to you, I am going to read you an excerpt from the story that explains this segment in greater detail. Back when I was in middle school, I had a girlfriend named Melissa. Oh, so he had a girlfriend back in middle school, huh? Melissa. So that's what the girl's name was? Or... No. It's... I think it's Melissa still. But, uh... What happened to her? She Is she still with him, or...? She suffered some kind of mental disorder that caused her to go into episodes. Episodes. So it's kind of like a Stranger Things reference. In an episode. She would stand or sit perfectly straight and still, and her face would instantly lose any expressions she had before. She would speak very clearly without any hint of emotion. When it was over, she would start trembling and sometimes bury her face in her hands and remain silent for several minutes. Hmm. I can't really convey the feeling it gave me in words, and I won't try. You had to see this in person to understand. But despite had this, zoom in my camera. she was a very kind person, and I cared about her dearly. Oh. We liked to hang out in a field at night and look at the stars. But one night, she didn't say anything to me at all. She just stared directly at the moon, trembling. I tried to talk to her, but she suddenly sprung up and ran right into traffic. I tried to stop her, but I was too late. She got hit by a truck. Oh no! Yeah. I looked her right, right in the eyes when the wheels went over her neck. That sight has always haunted me. It's after this scene where the story reveals its secret symbolism that has been hiding in plain sight all over the narrative. First, we can view such symbolism hiding within the names of the planets, specifically pathos, trance, and dementia. These are qualities relating to Melissa's tragedy, <gasps> from the illness that forced her to periods of suspended animation, and her eventual death that Zachary has a difficult time reflecting back on. We can also find this symbolism in the beginning of the story when Zack experiences the first of his few glitches. Remember that battle with Gazora, where the screen glitches into a sequence of red eyes that yeah. spawn all over the screen? Well, it wouldn't be too doubtful to pinpoint this as a symbol for Red's eye. Oh, that's it. Watch that is even creepier, dude. What the heck, man? That's even creepier. The narrator play, and waiting for the moment 
I just got chills, chills man. Especially Ooh. since we now know something in this game is sentient and is attempting to communicate with the Zachary. But it's all these pieces of symbolism combined with Melissa's tragic fate, face, and red that come together at the end to form the ultimate climax of this creepypasta. Bear in mind, this ending does have mixed reviews. It's either a you love it or hate it type scenario. So I highly suggest you read it for yourself and make up your own mind. But the story ends like this. We're at the ending? Zack notices a level with- Wait. Okay, so Zack now has another monster. I've seen this character, and his name's Solomon. Solomon is, uh... I don't know if he's from the Godzilla franchise. I've never actually heard of Solomon before. I've seen, like, images of him. I don't... He, I've never seen... Solomon before. With a cross symbol on it. And discovers it's actually a graveyard. Like, Solomon was right here. He like, look. That's Solomon. It discovers it's actually a graveyard he enters the graveyard and finds a hovering figure he dubs as the angel red then appears and devours said angel and zach flees and loads the final world yeah so he has all four of his monsters but oh my god that that's just plain cold man like you serious that's just cold Devours said angel, and Zack flees and loads the final world. So yeah, that, these are all his four monsters that he now has. Godzilla, Mothra, Anguirus, and Salomon. Zenith. Zenith. Here, he first enters the quiz level, quiz level. as per usual, only to find that face has been killed. Oh, okay, I just got chills again. Dude, he's dead. He continues on oh. and fights through a series of grotesque monsters until he arrives to his ultimate showdown with Red. During this battle, any attack Red hit him with in the game, Zack felt in real life including the immeasurable pain felt by Red's fire blasts. Zack also had no control over his body anymore. He couldn't even turn off the game at this point, only use his fingers on the controller to attempt a victory or die a painful death. He had an incredibly difficult time getting any hits on him oh, he bigger. as it was crushing all of his characters. Without any other hope, Zack sends in his last character, Godzilla. Here, Red tells Zachary that it was the one who killed Melissa. <gasps> Red was the virus in her brain, responsible for her episodes and eventual death. That's terrifying, but oh my god. Strut and angry Zack not only fights for his life, but for the life of his dear friend Melissa. <sighs> However, before Zack could even attempt to destroy this beast, Red opens its grotesque maw as wide as possible and consumes Godzilla whole. Ready to accept his death, Zack gives up. But moments later, the angel from earlier interrupts the battle and reveals angel? himself to be the spirit of Melissa. She confesses Red has been torturing her spirit. What? And warns that Red will do the same to Zack. Red has been torturing her spirit. And warns that Red will do the same to Zack if he loses this battle. And just before she fades away, she bestows Zachary with a new character. New character? Acacius? The Golden Light. From here, Zack returns to the battle with Red and effortlessly defeats the entity with his brand new gift. Oh 
Zack finds he has been teleported back to the graveyard, and Melissa thanks him for saving everyone, and promises they will see each other again. Wow. During the epilogue, which takes place three weeks later, Zack finds himself still shaken up from the experience. During those weeks, he confronted his friend Billy about the game, who understandably has no idea what he's even talking about. Billy then proceeds to talk to the person he got the game from, but the same thing happened, and so on. No one ever experienced what Zack experienced. It was a personalized game, just for him. He thought a lot about destroying it, even wanting to toss it into the lake, but he couldn't. Half of him wanted to keep it intact because of the experience and because of Melissa. Oh. During the last few sentences of the story, Zack admits he put it up for sale on eBay, not because of the money or anything, but because he doesn't want to be the one responsible for the cartridge. And in that last sentence, the game is live on eBay, and Zack patiently waits for someone Take it off his hands. Oh my god. Bruh. Oh, wow. Thank you for bearing with me through that very lengthy synopsis and side analysis. Now that's out of the way. Let's look back and see why this story is what it is. According to Vengage, who studied 72 popular creepypastas, they discovered there are a total of seven... Okay, well that's out of the way. But that is the Godzilla NES creepypasta though, so uh, that's something, you know? It's all that cool stuff. So, thank you guys so much for watching this. Um, there is a, I can see right there, there's a Go NES Godzilla replay by Billy Styler again. Um, I think I might do a reaction on that. That is way longer than this one. And, uh, yeah, I think I'll do that next time. I think I'll do it tomorrow or this weekend, maybe Saturday or Sunday. I don't know. But until then, uh, stay tuned for more reaction videos, stay tuned for more drawings and VR videos. And for that, I'm Ati1922, and this is where I say goodbye, everyone. See you on the next one. Peace!